to come past the brilliant Oleg Stoyanovsky, Vyacheslav Krasilnikov, the world champions, Gib Crab, put in an incredible shift to win that one. Jake Gibb, the target. And this is the Jake Gibb that we've known for so long on the world tour. Yeah. Jake Gibb that so many people look up to. Of Andrew. Cut shot from Guto. Look at the point from Guto. Straight to Evandro. And that's something that we've seen from this pairing throughout the event. They had an absolute battle on their hands against the Swedish jump setters, Armin and Helvik. So much talk about the jump setters, but the Swedish jump set really did catch Evandro cold for that first set. That's for sure. Jake Gibb pats the line, but he misses out this time. And for Gibb, well, he's played 142 events on the World Tour. Long-term partner of Sean Rosenthal. Also Casey Patterson to Rio 2016. But this newest venture with Taylor Crab is starting to whet the appetite of beach volleyball fans around the world, that's for certain. Crab, whose brother Trevor had to play a country quota to enter the draw and unfortunately lost out to Theo Bruder and came Schalk. And it really does open up this Olympic qualification campaign for the USA. It's going to be one worth watching. The World Tour has obviously started once more again here in Doha. But we're heading to Cancun the 16th of April to the 2nd of May for three events where that Olympic qualification campaign well, will almost be signed, sealed, and delivered. Remember, you can still qualify for the Olympics through the Continental Cup. That's five confederations, Europe, Asia, the Americas, South America. Still lots up for grabs in a interrupted season from COVID. But definitely the beach volleyball community remain undefeated. Back to the line, Taylor Crab. The battle here between the blockers and the defenders going to be well worth a watch. Jake Gibb, first final four in Doha. Took a fifth with Casey Patterson in 2016. Fine start. And for Guto, this is, some would say, a step up. Him and Samon are ranked well outside the Olympic qualification places for Brazil, but it's already clear who Brazil is sending to Tokyo. That's Evandro Bruno. That's Alison Alvaro. Alison and Bruno, both Olympic champions that split up post-Olympics. Alvaro Filo, for me, one of the most underrated players on the world tour. He's fantastic, but so is Evandro, often oh, yeah. underneath the ball, but the big figure of the 6'11", Evandro. Jump-serving machine. I mean, we've almost become accustomed to his power and accustomed to his brilliance that once pretty much shook the world. There are still young players out there who try and be of Andrew from the service line, but it's one thing trying to be of Andrew, and it's another thing hitting the ball at the speeds that he does. Guto says, my bad. A little bit of a shrug. Confident in their first competition together. It's still Guto's 11th final four, though. Two golds on the world tour. This time he just goes wrist away, and it's good because the set's quite tight from Evandro, but he manages just to turn the ball. And because he turns the ball, he goes off the left hand of Jake Gibb. Just really reaching in, trying to be quick with his hands to make the block. Jake Gibb, led by Rich Lamborn, Olympic gold medalist from the indoor team under the guidance of Hugh McCutcheon. For sure, Rich Lamborn would have taken so many coaching lessons from Hugh McCutcheon. Knuckle as a joust. And then a, it's a silly knuckle from Taylor Crabb. It really is. The control he has just with his knuckles is outstanding. Then he just sits in the pocket. Chance for Taylor Crabb from the middle. We've had jousts. We've had pokies. We've got balls back on one. We've just had such a high-level women's semi-final. The men's following 
in the footsteps of the women. There aren't many people in the crowd in Doha, but all of them giving full-on respect. The jousts, the knuckles, the defenses. Gudo's at full stretch. Crap. Too good. like a slight, maybe a little bit of sand in the eye for Guto. Does happen. Sure those who play beach volleyball will be fully aware of the amount of places that sand gets to after having a hit. Gets everywhere. Jake Gibb. That break and play just brought a little bit of joy to Brazil, really. A missed serve and maybe a lack of focus from Jake Gibb, but Guto will be serving next. It's another float servant. He's done well there, Taylor Crabb, from the inside this time. Hasn't got many angles from there, but it's a great decision to just look for the hands of Evandro. And he just, he's robust in the way he goes about his business there, Crabb. Dynamic. Just springs on up. Guto, wrist away. Touch off the block from Gibb. Chance to get you on up and get in on Evandro. They're in great form. Gibb and Crab. Team again, based in California. And as we mentioned earlier on, this is the first time since 2011 that the USA have had four teams in the FIVB Beach Volleyball World Tour. Semi-finals, two men, two women. Last time they did that was in the days of Rosenthal Gibb. 2011, to be precise. You have to really respect the fact that four of the eight American players are now 38 or older. Average age, sorry, is 36, with Jake 45, Phil Dalhauser 41, and Nick Lucena as well. They come up next in their semi-final. The longevity of Gibb and Dalhauser and how much they've given to this sport over a number of years is just incredible. So many players playing on the World Tour have based themselves on the likes of Gibb and Dalhauser and they've inspired the next generation. But Guto shows a lot of line there and that gets Gibb chasing it before chopping it back on the cut short. Short on Gibb. Chance for the Hawaiian Taylor Crab just to slot. Jake Gibb in and last year Jake Gibb was looking to come in on more of an angle a little bit of a wider set and what you'd see from Gibb is he'd have a bit of a harder cross court and he'd also have a bit of a pat to the line but he straightened up his approach on the right side and it's something he used to do a lot more of, of what I've seen and it allows him to play with the line a lot more and also he's got that one back across his body so so good that it opens up a lot of the court for Jake Gibb but Evandro is a heavy hitting hammer from Brazil. That world championship in Vienna. Him and Andre really did surprise a few to say the least, but it was because of big serves like this. Evandro to go again. Jake Gibb back passing straight, both coming in straight. And this is Jake Gibb at his very best. My word. You see him come in line, play with the line, but from the same approach, just turn it back, sharp angle. Those are the sorts of swings that make me very, very excited here. For those who aren't aware, we're in London, recording remotely on a platform called Sport, the competition taking place in Doha. We have had a couple of technical difficulties. Siri decided to come on in and be my 
co-commentator for just a moment. Siri gets everywhere, but so does Evandra. Brazil lead 11-10. Jake Gibb leading in the timeout for the USA. Seventeen seasons for Jake Gibb on the World Tour. Jumbo, well seen from Guto. His weight's going one way, and he manages to just readjust and plant a hand behind it. And it would have been a great phase of play for Jake Gibb if he can hammer the ball sharp angle one side to then doing exactly the same on the other. But that doesn't happen this time. Guto's reactions defensively just need to be applauded for the fact that he can shuffle, adjust, and still keep an arm in an air and stay solid. Two points. Guto, Evandro, Jake Gibb goes back into that same area of court. What you have to look for here for Jake Gibb again is the ability just to not try to hit the ball too hard. Gudo, off the net. Big celebrations from Evandro as the two entwine in the center of the court. There's a lot of volleyball left in this one. Jake Gibb passing straight from the right side again. This time it's tied and Evandro claps. He's looking for that one across the body again, Jake Gibb. And it's the inside hand of Evandro that's pressing. The press with both hands, but blocking's not about taking the height away from the spiker. It helps, so helps to be big and high over the net, but it's about taking angles away with the hands late. This time, that's what Evandre tries to do, but Guto is Superman as he's been behind him, just like Rosenthal once was too, but falling away, high pat to the angle, two-point game once more with the USA, completely in touch. Guto is everywhere, but Jake Gibb is on top form too. This time it's Gibb. Guto is in rhythm. It's a little bit off the net, but he tries to hammer the line. It's a late move. You look at Taylor Crabb, moves late into the angle. Jake Gibb, late into the line, playing with the vision of Guto. You see Taylor Crabb just mirroring the approach of the spiker all the time. It's Jake the spiker give that plays this time a little bit wider. Smart play, the ball travels four or five meters. And you know what that means? It means that Evandro has to do the same thing. And if the Americans will feel that if they can get Evandro moving a little bit, they might just squeeze him down the line. That's exactly what happens. Space opens up, Crabb sees it. 14 all. So many comments, especially Brazilian on the YouTube channel. That's something that 
we're paying attention to so far in some questions, but it's just so good to see the uptake of people watching these games. Guto into the net this time. Some opinions on the side out of Guto, the defense. Very well received the defensive capabilities online at the moment of how Guto is playing back there. Reading, good positions. People saying that Brazil's defender is incredible. I think everybody on the FIVB World Tour would agree with Guto's defensive capabilities. That's for sure. Taylor Crab also has some defensive capabilities of his own as well. Calm again. Did Crab have just sailed their way through this competition? A win against Turkey. A win against Mirko Gerson and Adrian Heydrich. But the last two victories. Really impressive. Peter Cantor, Bartosz Wojciak. The fast running speed that Poland brings. But this Polish team have changed the game over the last few years. They've managed to run the ball wide, run it quick, make the blockers' life an absolute nightmare. Other teams have taken parts of that game and applied it to their own, but given crap. Come past the 16th seeds. Cantor Wozniak, 2 0. Krasilnikov Stoyanovsky, 24 22, 21 15. Side out brings it back to 15 all. On the other side of the draw, sneaking around, there's also a win for Guto and Evandro against Cantor Wozniak, but also against Krasilnikov Stoyanovsky. Not the ideal situation for Krasilnikov Stoyanovsky throughout this competition. This time looking to the line once more and the good thing for Jake Gibb here is when he's square on passing well that he can chop back angle, his vision's very good. Guto chasing once more but it was a insecure touch primarily that Took the ball onto the net and it allowed the opportunity for Jake Gibb to just run this game again. Out of reach for Evandro. And if you pay attention to the draw, David Armand, Jonathan Helvig from Sweden. What? A week for them. I'm interested to see. I was watching the chat earlier on on the YouTube channel. Evandro turning to the line, beating Gibb this time in the action. But just interested to know what your thoughts are on the jump set team from Sweden. They're taking the game again to another level, like the likes of Cantor Wojciak once did. And still are. 17 16 here, though. Diving defensive play, trying to kick in to get close. Guto. Have a look at what Guto does off the ball here. It's outrageous. He has to pass from the sideline and he passes on such a tight angle, he has to scurry close to Evandro to get the ball to his right side to be able to open up the whole court. Crash helmets on, Evandro. Jake Gibb, wow, has to pass the serve from Evandro, which is the fastest serve in the world alongside Nikolai. Then he has to play cover. Then he has to turn and put the ball away. 45, Jake Gibb. Making it look easy. Give this time with the jump serve. Evandro the target. Three away, USA, from taking this opening set. Evandro, quick feet, good arm, sharp angle. Again, as soon as you get him anywhere near the net, Evandro, he's going to score. Good vision. Everything's in line for him. Well, 
Now, some of the replies, the Swedes give something new, a wow feeling to the game. People want to see them win a lot more in the future. That's great to see. A new revelation in beach volleyball after the Vikings. Well, I don't know, for beach volleyball fans, this performance of a ninth from Sweden almost reminded me of the fifth that the Vikings got a few years ago in Klagenfurt that gave them the confidence to really step up to world level. So always interesting to know what you guys are thinking. Time out. Brazil lead by one. A lot of love for Guto playing well alongside of Andro, Michael King, and Ben Nagy. Sweden are incredible because of the jump sets, 10 out of 10. Yeah, when they pass well, the Swedish team, they really are a threat, aren't they? Still only 19 years of age, led by Rasmus Jonasson and Anders Christensen. Anders Christensen former Swedish indoor national coach, a legend of the game in Sweden, led Sweden to a silver medal in the European Championships some time ago, their best indoor result at that time. But it's certainly interesting to see what happens to Sweden as their crossover from winning Youth Olympics and FIVB events age group categories can transfer into the senior side of the game. It's a fantastic time out from Div Crab because it just brings a service error from Brazil. How many times do we see that in beach volleyball for anyone that plays themselves? Just a bit of a loss of concentration. Back set from Evandro to Guto. No wonder they're smiling. That ball's travelled, what, five metres? And Guto's just unleashing. He's chasing, he's chasing, he's chasing. He gets there and thinks, there's Jake Gibb, I need to turn it back, and boom. Some play from Guto, but great setting from Evandro. Set point for Brazil. Long from Evandro. That's two that they've missed in quick succession. Overtime. Two clear needed. Short. Evandro on two. We see it coming. We see it coming. That means that Jake Gibbs sees it coming. He's watching passer Setter. Setter turns to Spiker. He sees it. He makes the jump into the line of Evandro. When he makes a jump into the line, his hands are fast. They're pressing. And the tables have turned. The USA have their first set point. Gudo siding out to stay in this first set. Gudo with the back set once more. And this is just a calculated play. Think of beach volleyball sometimes as poker. You move the blocker, the blocker's drifting, you chip off the drifting blocker. The blocker wants to be stable. And that's what Brazil take away from Jake Gibb and that's what he's chasing the whole way through. For those asking on the chat, Guto is 186, six foot one. 21 all, Guto to serve. Scoop from Guto. Chance from the outside. What a game this is. Even better swing from Guto. So sorry, I almost put my hand over my mouth then. And obviously quite rusty after a year in the commentary wilderness. But Guto on the fly, falling away. Crab tends to want to step up there and take it overhand, but to no avail. Gib, right side, straight approach once more. Off the hands, chance. It's a huge, huge opportunity, but it's a free ball. So USA in rhythm, the advantage goes back to them. Jake Gibb in rhythm. I mean, Jake Gibb is renowned for just siding out, play after play, ball after ball. Guto. This time, Crab's there again. He's sitting much deeper here because of everything Gudo is swinging at. He's not hitting everything steep. Beach volleyball's not about that. He's hitting deep and trying to test Crab there. 
third set point for Evandrick. Jake Gibb off the net, straight approach once more. Frustration for Evandre. Feels like he should have got his claws on that one, Evandre, because he hits through the seam. Jake Gibb trying to take a couple of little looks, have a look in the air as well, and split the gap between block and defense. From the left side, Evandre. One point. The difference. It's another set point. And Evandro from there, that's undiggable really. He comes up facing seam and just turns it away from the body. No blocker or defender is going to start in that line. But that's also a fantastic turn back. The high level... The game just keeps progressing through jump setting, through setting different zones, from testing blockers, testing defenders, but the level is going up year on year. Crab again. Good touch from Taylor Crab, but I make that three from three on Guto. Always attacking the deep areas. It, the smaller players in the beach volleyball world won't have the same amount of angles as the taller players. Hence, it does help to be slightly taller. But the decision making is so key. And Guto is not trying to hit too steep. He's not trying to hit too soft. He's just trying to play the game into the back area of the court with physicality. And it's key. Taylor Crab left side. Good setting. It's off the net. Off the net takes Evandro out of the game. From the left side, boom. Taylor Crab sat in the pocket. Guto has made the same 100 times the 2019 World Championship, especially the semi-final. Um, I'll be honest, Ben, so I've, I've struggled. Um, <laughs> I love the World Tour. I love my beach volleyball. And uh, it's, it's been tough. Um, but back to this action, back to the line goes Taylor Crab. But he's just over-rotating on that one. I've also watched back a lot of volleyball uh, over the past... Um, yeah, best part of 15 months and enjoyed every single bit of it and learned a lot as well. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the runbacks from the digital team at the FIVB. They've done a great job of keeping volleyball running through a pandemic. It's, it's not an easy job. Evandro just keeps on jogging. Question from Laura Shuey. Do the Swedish team have any chance of qualifying for the Olympics this year? It comes down to the Continental Cup, which actually I can do a little bit of research for you as quick as possible. But to my knowledge, they are still in, but that would be their best route. Unfortunately, due to this being their first four-star main draw, uh, points are taken from the 12 best results over a period um, for a team. Um, so this year, it looks as if it's going to be too far for them, but you never know. If they're still in the Continental Cup, then they still have a really good opportunity. And I would back my house is that put my house on the fact they're still in the Continental Cup. Remember, five places from the Continental Cup will go to the Olympic Games. Guto from the inside. This time he goes back to shooting a little bit more. It's, it's interesting for anyone watching things that I'm personally looking for. He stays so aggressive under those pressure situations and then he goes back to chipping the ball and sits the defender waiting for the more powerful attack before going back to shooting. Evandro, 3-1. USA really need to push it. Crab, hammer angle, Guto. This is phenomenal work from Guto. And no wonder that Evandro's so hyped up as well because he sat stable, just over the hands, overhand defense, back on one, pushes it back. Taylor Crab did nothing wrong. Jake Gibb did nothing wrong. Guto did something very good. Sometimes that's just what the game is, is about. Jake, get back to the line. Over the hands of Evandro. Reaching into the angle, back to the line. And the more that you chase around, the more that you lose your presence with the pressing. 
and it leaves him, let's say, tallable. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much to the... Beach Volleyball blog, who's just answered my question. Sweden's Continental Cup group, Latvia, Italy, Russia, Turkey, Lithuania, Estonia, Slovenia, and England. Um, I may need to check that, and if not, I should definitely know it, um, being English, but we can, um, yeah, let's, let's definitely double check it. But Beach Volleyball blog, definitely someone to check out on Instagram, some great research, something I read personally as well. Guto back to the line. And something with the just bounce beach and the blogs and the volleyball community is, is growing strong. And especially through the pandemic, it's been good for everybody to lean on the digital pr presence of the FIVB and also bounce beach and everyone else who makes this so much fun. Evandro, you can see what he's been working here because his footsteps to the pin to Jake Gibb, very good. The press, also excellent. Teams, Brazilian coaches will know that Evandro will, teams will want to push Evandro around. Teams will want to move him and look to try and go off of him. Therefore, it's only fair that he tries to work on that footwork. Beach volleyball is changing as we go. Lampus. Papadopoulos on the stand once more. I think the referees, everybody involved, missed their volleyball throughout this stage. Gudo from the inside, hammered to the line. Oh, maybe jumping in angle is... Jake Gibb going late once more. It's, it's phenomenal blocking, really. Starts on the line. There he is. What a great angle that is. Jumping into the angle. The right hand, unreal. Andrew bounces back, bounces with some interest. And you have to respect for a big guy at almost seven foot of Andrew to still get his arms all the way back in his approach to pull himself up. It's great to watch. Andrew spin serve wide of the mark. And as the sport grows, it's just funny how we become accustomed to how good a server Evandro is. And it's still just a special. Jake Gibb getting caught up with the knuckle. And if anyone would have seen the highlights on line today from their match yesterday against Cantor, where is Yak when Jake Gibb broke, Taylor made the dig, and Jake Gibb just managed to get a knuckle back towards Jake Gibb. It was an outstanding bit of play. Someone who knows all about outstanding play is Guto. Deep on Jake Gibb again. He straightens that play up, and this is a situation he'll want to be in, but Guto is, again, making the read back there. He's a little bit off balance. Transition set from Evandro. Again, you have to think that the bigger the player, the harder the setting is. It really is. And for Evandro to get the ball on there is quite special. Transition setting is tough for anyone. There's some just chitter chatter about Anders Moll on the chat as well. Anders Moll has got a hip injury. It's the same one that was bothering him. And as in the European Championship in Jamala back last summer, off the hands of Andrew goes off of Jake Gibb. He's hoping he's going to be back soon. Trained for two weeks in Tenerife, Anders Malt. Christian Sorum obviously teamed up with Svein Solhag. For this competition. And it was actually Christian Son that was doing the blocking. But these guys read the game so well, they're good in every single part of the game. Jake Gibb, tight, works it back angle. Again, from that straight approach. It's got a very similar feel to this second set as we saw in the first.
on two of Andrew. Difficult to stop, and it's a ploy that they're always going to use. Gudo goes straight in for the hug. Taylor Crab, left side. A little bit of line left. And if you give him an inch, Crab will take it. That's for sure, is it? Prayer time in Doha. Brings a unique kind of feeling to the beach volleyball court here. As we mentioned earlier. We are working from London. Guto, more joy. Two balls huge, but the cover from Guto is key. Once you set, you've got to cover your hitter. It's something that people forget. You put the set up, you think it looks good. You want to sit there and admire it, watch the hitter put the ball away. But Guto is disciplined there to get himself into a good position and it's opened up a two point lead. Taylor Crab, angle line, change. Great feet from Taylor Crabb. And he manages to get himself up into a good situation so he can dart to the ball. And the thing about Evandre being so big is that when he makes moves, it's slightly easier to see him reach into those zones. That's all Crabb does, and he puts the ball away to the line. We go to the technical timeout here, and really, it's anyone's game. Jake Gibbs being fantastic. Guto, you can see, in the zone. Beach volleyball vlog. Yeah, absolutely. I, did, I didn't think that Sweden were there. I know that uh, England, I was pretty sure that England didn't have that group. Although it is good to know that you get something wrong because you get lots right in your blogs. Perfect. More on the chatter. Thank you very much, Malta, that Anders Molg didn't really train too much. Um, I'm going on just a very brief brief message and uh, watching the Instagram story, so thank you for that. It's just great to have you all with me. There's so much going on in the world of beach volleyball at the moment. It's very, very... It's just exciting times with the Olympics on the horizon, but the progression of the sport for the purist is, is great to watch. Jake Gibb. This time off the line, and they're just targeting the hands. Again, sometimes when Evandro presents himself, it actually makes it really nice in rhythm to be able to go off the hands of the big blocker, one of the biggest in the world. You look at the Stoyanovskis, you look at the Anders Moles, you look at the Jake Gibbs, even the Dauhauser. There's once upon a time where Dauhauser, Alisson, they were the biggest guys on tour, but now every nation you think Switzerland, Heydrich, absolutely humongous on the net. Guto, not so humongous, but he is so, so good. Evandre. <laughs> Talking of so good, I don't want to repeat myself too much here, but my word, Jake Gibb, great serving. The, the level of volleyball here is so high. Taylor Crabb. What a way to come to the party. Turning, scooping of Andrew on two, goes soft. He ends up, literally ends up shooting the ball because he's underneath it, but he knows that Jake Gibb has stopped the hard two ball. That's something that we've seen. But this is just great volleyball. Starting off, Jake Gibb has to pass the rocket of a jump serve from Evandre. He takes a small step, stays stable, he stays solid, he gets the ball in, but then everybody comes alive. Crab, Evandre himself, and Guto. Brazil and the USA. How many encounters throughout the last years have you seen? Rogers, Dalhauser, Manuel, Ricardo, Halasson, just 
names, Gib, Rosenthal, just big names in the sport going head to head. And this is no different. This is a game that we're going to remember. Jake Gibb, will he continue after Tokyo? We hope so because he's 45 and gives so much to the game. He would say gives more than what he actually takes from it, Jake Gibb. And Gudo, again, looking for the block, finding a way past. And the way that sports science works and the way that the professionalism works from the athletes nowadays mean that they can play until later. Who knows that what the next generation will be able to play this sport until into a high level. It's Jake Gibb that charges in, snaps back. He shows so much line in the air and Gudo buys it. It's like giving him a little bit of a hook. Sells the line and then snaps back angle. Back to the previous conversation of longevity. Jake Gibb, Dalhauser, two of the most longest servers in the game. John Hyden in the USA as well. Manuel played until his early 40s. Guto underneath that one. Once more, it's good reading from Gibb. He's underneath the ball, so he shows the line. And at that point, the press comes from Gibb. Oh, crabs on absolute flames back there as well. But Brazil open up a two-point lead. And as players mature, the calmness under pressure is better. So what they might maybe miss a little bit physically, they can make up in being calm and making decisions. And Jake Gibb can keep going in this sport for as long as he wishes. Evandro into the net this time. Off the net. Evandro from the left side. Trying to hit the sharp angle. And there's a break for the USA. Once more, as soon as you pass off the net, you're out of rhythm. The sharper angles become more difficult to access. Back set wide. I mean, did anyone know that Evandro had this in his locker? Please, put it on a postage stamp and send it to me if you did, because I was unsure. Look at this. Evandro dishes the ball six meters on point with a back set, boom, to the line. Everyone watching has got to be having fun with that one. Oh, Jake Gibb. This game is heating up now. You've got Evandro setting the ball, back setting six meters on point, diving into the angle is Jake Gibb jumping the line, but moving into the angle. Now you see the space, Guto. Now you don't. Timeout from Brazil. They had it their own way, but now the USA are starting to really come to this party. And the chat's absolutely flying as well. Some of you far too kind on here. <laughs> Swedish jump set. Still more chat about them. Phil Smith, good to see you. But Brazil and the USA, yes, maybe some people are looking towards a third set here. I would say that I've watched too much volleyball to take anything for granted, especially when Evandro decides to stay high like this. Not many blockers in the world that can take the height of Evandro. A blocker has to take space and time and press, but when the ball's coming from much higher, they have to adapt as well. 
Is that Randy Stokeless that's just popped up in the chat as well? Legends coming in here on YouTube. Into the angle. Good from Evandro. And as some people were suggesting that this was going to three, Evandro's just changed the game completely. As the set comes onto the net, you can see it's too tight. Evandro's too big there. And that, to me, equals a problem for the USA, but not this time. As soon as the ball's just set that little bit more off the net, it allows the opportunity for Jake Gibb to be able to swing up. And when he swings up, he can go off the hands. And that's hugely important. The game is all about angles. You have to be able to hit angles around, or you have to be able to go off the top of the hands. Good from Guto. Some questions here. I have no, Spencer, thank you for that one. Uh, I have no idea. I've um, only just found out about the other events from the FIVB. It's just amazing to have the World Tour back like yourself. I've been probably watching it all week. Um, Aaron absolutely can figure that one out later with the Instagram as well. But back to the action here of Andro goes long and he's just gifted a set point to the USA. That's the thing for Evandro, it's risk against reward. It's sometimes going to go his way. He's going to make runs of five or six and other times it's going to go against him. Off the net, Guto goes deep again. Oh, one line judge says in, the other says out. Guto says in and Guto is nodding. Jake Gibb and Taylor Crabb are saying no. Does anyone want to make a decision here? I, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. Luckily, we have one of the most experienced referees in the world. Out. The replay says out. There's the line isn't moving. If the if sand on the line, if anything, but goes Brazil's way. The replay gave it all. That's the way it goes. And Jake Gibb. And it might have been a touch that actually the first referee gave them, which is completely fair. So sorry if I missed that one as well. Watching from London, from Doha, USA. Set point, Jake Gibb. One of the best that we've ever seen in this sport. Serving short. Dummy two ball. No, actual two ball from the Evandro in the front third of the court is a force to really be reckoned with if he can be hitting from off the net it gives the defender a chance if it's too tight then it gives the blocker a chance out from Evandro Another miss serve. If you count, that's two in a row from Evandro. And he's not going to change because he knows what problems he can cause when it's good. He hangs his hat on it and he sticks with it. Another set point. Net touch of Andrew. We go to three here in Doha. What a game. Evandro serves short. It messes with his pass to start with, but it's always going to upset the rhythm of his approach. Sets tight. Big net touch with the right hand. We are going to three here. Don't think any of you watching are going to be too concerned that we get to watch more of this game. Gib Crab. Lost the first one. But they've won the second set, 23-21. Said at the end of the last set, still a lot of volleyball left in this. So some more 
just great to see so many people interacting here. It's been fantastic that the FIVB have managed to show all four courts all week. Taylor's short serve causing some problems, something that we've just seen. I completely agree with that. Jake Gibb falling away. There's a double touch against Jake Gibb. Maybe a carry. Didn't quite see this one on my monitor. Strong from Crab. Just see when you get caught underneath the ball, it's quite important that you keep walking back with the ball. You don't want to be falling backwards and then transfer your weight forwards. Quick question, who's my money on now? Big question. Whoever gets to 15 first, uh, Simon would be my answer. Um, it's a very difficult situation. I imagine like the rest of you, I can't pick a winner when two teams are playing this well. It, interesting battle is going to be between Jake Gibb and Evandro, though. But they've gone back to Guto. Guto getting served short this time, trying to bring the block in. Ball's gone short. Come on, Taylor is the call from Jake Gibb. He broke the line with the anticipation, I think, that he wanted Crab to swift on round onto that sharper swing. Always interesting to know who your money is on, though, Simon, in this, the deciding set. There's always been a rivalry in this sport, isn't there, between Brazil and the USA, and those who know this sport know this rivalry well. It's just another chapter. Evandro, full fade. Jake Gibbs is not happy here. Okay, what call is Jake Gibbs saying that's been missed? Did the ball hit the floor there? I don't know. I see what you see. Is there a net touch there? Absolutely not. Fall to the floor. If anyone sees it, please let me know. Did the ball touch the floor against Guto? I'm a little bit unsure. I have no idea. But we have to just know that the referees are the best in the business. They are phenomenal. And I think that there was nothing missed on that occasion. But Gibb is fired up. He's two down. And when Gibb's fired up, you don't really want to cross him. Oh, sitting there, waiting. How easy does Gudo make that look? Okay. We just said. When Jake Gibb gets fired up, you don't want to cross him. And then he dives at angle with such quick hands. Low, when you're low as a blocker, you're outside of the vision. The hands are so quick. Balls wide this time, catted back from Guto. So much life left in this one. Brazil lead by two. Jake Gibb off the hands of Evandro. Some people would see a block there and get slightly apprehensive, slightly defensive, but Gibb stays high. And as we said, when he gets set tight, he has to get it steeper. That's when he gets blocked. But in this situation, he's in a good spot and he can swing high and it makes it difficult for Evandro. And Evandro just chases in. Net touch against Evandro. Evandro's... I mean, Evandro says no, but his finishing position does tend to not leave him much support for this. Oh, there's a net touch. Was it Jake Gibb first? Ball's out anyway. Starting to really enjoy the chat and the Kibben brothers watching as well. Hello from London. More great content throughout the lockdown period from the McKibben Bros. Line is the call, but where Jake Gibb has managed to go off the hands multiple times. The closure here and the pressing, taking space of Andrew. Look how low of Andrew gets there as well. The left hand, fingers down, little fingers down as well, into the court from Evandro, no tooling that one. Oh. 
Jake Gibb this time goes back angle. Quick question. Am I commentating in my flip-flops? Great question from, from you. Absolutely not. I have my slippers on, actually. It's cold in London. As much as I live for my flip-flops, as I get older, I, uh, I prefer to be warm. Evandro. Beaten. Oh, hands from Gibb. The fast hands into the line. Two ball, it's all about watching multiple things at one time. Blocking is about focus. He manages to focus on the spiker, but also the per peripheral vision onto the two ball. Oh, out of the system this time. Out of rhythm, falling backwards. High swing off the hands. Gluto. Gluto. Guto stays clutch. Just slightly just slides the ball away from his body, which is away from the angle he's facing, making it difficult to defend against. Definitely not saying Karambula until he's here, but although we do send our FIVB World Tour love to Karambula and Rossi, who have just had a tough two weeks on the turn of Andrew. Karambula, there you go. Not quite with the same of excitement as normal, but Karambula. There's Enrico Rossi that had a false COVID test before Doha and then Karambula has had COVID in the family this week as well so he stayed at home so we just wish him all the best but Evandro is fast with the hands and into the scene we can't wait until the likes of Karambula Rossi come back as well because the world tour is better with Mr. Skyball and the adventurous way that they're playing. Remember, they share the same coach now, Marco Salustri as Samoylovs and Smedins. They took a fifth this week. Marco Salustri, former coach of Japan, Russia, Italy, you name it, he's done it. He's got about 700 T-shirts. Gib, two looks at the court. Very straight, high over the top, flying after it but not this time. Sitting wide there, Guto, really. He's just sitting wide. He can chase down the high line. Line's cool. Once more, the dream of a gold medal match from the USA disappearing here. It's a later block from Evandro due to the fact that he sees Taylor Crab out of rhythm. He goes later. His right hand stays disciplined. Five will do it. Dauhauser, Lucena up against Schweiner and Perisic next from the Czech Republic, what a run they've had after being undefeated in the pool stage. Now they really do get an opportunity to make another World Tour final, Perisic and Schweiner, after taking a silver to the Vikings in Ostrava in 2019. Once more off the net, Evandro looking to turn it back, and all of a sudden, you just feel like the USA as much as this difference seems too far, three has gone back to two, and you always fancy Crab to make a dig. There it is, right on cue from Taylor Crab. Second opportunity for Guto from the center. Two digs in a row from Taylor Crab. Phenomenal setting from Jake Gibb. He's low, he gives Crab time, but it's Guto finds the seam. This is outrageous work from both teams. Crabs, full force, chasing round. First one to the line, crossing over with his feet, falling to the floor, giving height to Jake Gibb, but just there. Breaking the block, pointing to the stars. Scudo. Short on Jake Gibb. Gets up quick because he needs his rhythm back to be able to put the ball away. 8-11. Now it's almost game over. Pirouette from Evandro. Super quick with the feet. And he's just lethal, isn't he? 
when you're tall, you don't really need to hit as many angles. You can sort of give it away where you're facing, but you can go over the top. And he's taking that straight to Boomtown. Ouch. Big rallies, big plays. The World Tour is back. And we love it. So much back and forth in this one. It really is. It's the sort of game that these players will remember and love to play in. Gudo, it's got to come. He sees Crab goes the other way. And for the first time, you really see Jake Gibbs slightly dejected here. Five is a long way back. They were back to two. But Guto, once more, is just taking matters into his own hands here. Give Crab, make one back. We really have, have a, had a couple of fantastic games. The second women's semi-final, the world champions. Melissa, Sarah Pavin, come from an absolute battle against Agatha Duda, and now it's exactly the same in the men's. Remember, next up, we've got Phil Dalhauser. Oh, overhand first touch from Evandro. And as the game starts to open up, the handling calls are slightly lighter than they would have been once upon a time. Evandro with the hammer. First match point for Evandro and Guto. Evandro playing without Bruno this week, and it looks like it's going to be a similar result to normal. From the right side, Gibbs stays alive. Bruno recovering from COVID. We wish him all the best. And he will just be overjoyed with the form of his partner. As Gudo steps in from the right side. Another match point. Crab is there on the turn, Gib. My word. Is there a little bit left in the tank here for Gib Crab? Pressure's on Brazil here. It's one thing from Crab to get there. It's another thing to pass with a tempo and a peak where the ball just sits up and Jake Gib can pick his shot in turn to put the ball away. Third match point for Brazil. Guto, Evandro, more back setting of seven meters from Evandro. Where has this come from? We haven't seen that in the COVID times, but it's Evandro and Guto in their first competition together that go through to the gold medal match tomorrow. It's been a fantastic run though from Jake Gibb and Taylor Crabb. Remember, they won in Mexico back in November 2019, a fifth here last year. They will play for bronze tomorrow, but it's Evandro Guto that win in three.